phonics class today, we are learning some tricky trigraphs. Diagraphs have two letters and trigraphs like these ones have three letters. Let's go! The first trigraph is air, like the air that we breathe. Air, air, air. For example, fair, f, air, fair. Very good. There's also chair, ch, air, chair. Nice. Then there's dairy, d, airy, dairy. So once again, a, i, r is air, air, air. Very good. The next trigraph is a, r, e, which is also the same sound. Air, air, air. For example, we have hair. H, air, hair. Very good. There's also scared. Sk, aired, scared. Very good. And also careful. K, airful, careful. Very good. Once again, A, R, E is the same as A, I, R. Air, air, air. The third trigraph is E A R, ear, 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 like the ears that we use to listen. For example, we have hear, h, ear, hear. We also have fear, f, ear, fear. Very good. And also clear, cl, ear, clear. Very good. Once again, E A R is ear, 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 like the two ears that we have. E A R also has the second sound, which is er, 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 like E R. For example, we have earth, earth, earth. Very good. We also have learn, l, earn, learn. Very good. There's also search, search, search. Very good. Once again, E A R has ear, 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 but also er, er, er. Very good. The fourth trigraph is U R E, which pronounces you are, you are, you are. This one's a tricky one. For example, we have pure, p, you are, pure. Very good. We also have mature, mature, mature. Very good. There's also cure, k, u, a, cure. Nice. But u, r, a also has a second sound, which is e, 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 like e, r, e. For example, we have picture, e, e, picture. Very good. We also have injure. Uh, uh, injure. Good. And finally, mixture. Uh, uh, mixture. Very good. Now it's your turn. See if you can spot the correct trigraphs in these following words. Are you ready? The first one is spare. Spare. Like a spare tire, a spare wheel. What, what trigraph can you hear in spare? Good. Air, air, spare. A R E. Nice. The next one is lair. Lair, lair, lair. Like a dragon's lair. What trigraph can you hear in lair? Good. Air, air, lair. A I R, air. What about this one? This one is lua. Lua. Like to lua some fish. What trigraph can you hear in lua? Good. We have ua. L, ua, lua. Lua, lua, lua. Very good. U, R, E. The final one we have beard. Beard, beard, beard. What trigraph can you hear in beard? Good. B, eared. Beard. Ear, ear, ear. E A R, like your ear. Nice. If you can do this, that means you're ready for the reading practice. 
Are you ready? I'll give you three sentences to read with these trigraphs. This is the first one. I'll give you a moment. This year, my hair and beard was sure nice. Good. This year, my hair and beard was sure nice. Very good. If you can do this, you're incredible and you're ready for level two. Try to read this one. I'll give you a moment. The bear wears a pair of square socks. Very good. The bear wears a pair of square socks. Nice. This one was tricky, but if you can do this, that means you're ready for level three. Try to read this one. I'll give you a moment. The treasure near the stairs was rare. Good. The treasure near the stairs was rare. Very good. If you can do this, you're amazing and you're ready for the review. Today we learned four trigraphs. The first one was A-I-R, air, 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 like in fair. The second one was also the same sound, air, 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 like in hair. Then we have ear, 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 like in here, but also this is er, 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 like in earth. The final trigraph was ua, ua, ua like in pure, but it's also uh, 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 like in picture. Take some time to practice these tricky trigraphs and see how many other words you can think of with these sounds. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are reading Monkey with a Tool Belt and the Noisy Problem by Chris Monroe. Let's go! This is Chico. Aruga, boom, clang, clang. Early one morning, Chico Bonbon awoke to a loud noise in his treehouse. What could that be, he wondered, as he jumped out of bed and straightened his tool belt. Aruga, boom, clang, clang. Some of Chico's tools. He has a chopper, a chipper, a booper, a bipper, a tacker, a clacker, and many more tools. He had every tool a monkey would ever need. Aruga, boom, clang, clang. There it was again. It must be the wind, Chico thought. A strong wind was blowing through the bedroom window. He shut the window and pulled his screwdriver from his tool belt to reattach the curtain rod that had blown off the wall. The wind can be very loud sometimes, he said to himself. Chico heard the noise 17 times during breakfast. I'm not sure this is the wind after all. Boom, clang, clang, aruga. Chico decided to investigate. He took his hear a lot tool from his belt and put it up to the wall. He checked in the bread box he peeked in the hamper. He pried up the floorboards with a snozzle and clamper. He climbed up a pole. He dove in the pool. He looked under the stairs with a stair staring tool, but he couldn't find the noise. Chico sat on the steps to think. Was the woodpecker family playing a trick on him? Was someone chopping his tree into firewood? Were there bats in the belfry? Was it a monster? Had a family of very loud squirrels moved in? Had a spacecraft landed on the roof? Was there a termite problem? This could be serious, Chico thought. He put on his safety goggles and continued to hunt. He searched everywhere in the house. But Chico couldn't use his tools to fix the noisy problem because he couldn't find the noisy problem. Chico stopped in the hallway and took his hanky from his tool belt. He wiped off his face. He had gotten very dirty while searching, especially when he went up the chimney. He opened the laundry chute door just as he was dropping in the hanky. The noise echoed up the chute. Aruga, boom, clang, clang. Chico rubbed his ears. I think I found the noise, he said. He plugged his earplugs into his ears and put on his hard hat. Then he bravely peered down the chute. 
It was very dark. Chico shone his 1000 watt flashlight down the hole, but all he could see was his hanky and a pair of shorts and a beige towel jammed in the short. Someone was stuck in there. I should go down to the laundry room and look up, thought Chico, which is what he did. And this is what he saw. An elephant was clogging his laundry chute. The elephant wiggled and kicked his feet. Aruga, boom, boom, clang. What are you doing up there? I'm stuck. My name is Clark. Boom, clang, clang. I must have wandered into the wrong treehouse last night in the dark. I thought this was Elsa's treehouse. Oh, Elsa lives two trees down. Her treehouse does look a lot like mine. Yes, although I don't believe she has a laundry chute, I'll have to build her one, thought Chico. But for now, he set to work to get Clark out. First, he measured the distance to Clark with his measuring tape. Then, using his pencil, he divided by seven. Thirdly, he made three cuts to the edge of the chute with his three-cut saw. Fourth, he sanded the inside of the chute with his silver stopper sander. Fifth, he thought about using his extra-large grease gun to squirt grease around Clark's edges, but changed his mind. Six. Too messy, he thought, it might get all over my laundry. 7. He decided to go with plan B. 8. He went to the kitchen and came back with 12 bananas. He began peeling and eating them one by one. 9. Clark smelled bananas. Are you taking a banana break? 10. Chico put the banana peels into his newly built banana cannon and shot them up the chute. It's part of my plan. 11. He then used his edge wedger to wedge the slippery peels around Clark's edges. And finally, he attached a sticky winch to Clark's foot and pulled with all his might. He pulled and pulled and suddenly, pop! Clark broke free and slid down the chute, landing with a giant thud on the laundry pile. Thank you, said Clark. That was really uncomfortable. Also, very loud. Yes, said Chico, it really was. Chico wanted to ask Clark just exactly how he had gotten into the laundry chute, but he thought that might be rude. Would you like to have some lunch? And Clark said, yes, please. So they sat down to a peanut butter banana feast. Good thing you have a tool belt, said Clark. Yes, said Chico, it's very handy. I like your tool belt. Thank you. Do they come in my size? Why, yes they do. I can help you with that. And he did. Look at that. So cute. Did you like this story? And what do you think about Chico and Clark being friends with two belts together? Share with me down below. After this, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For social studies in December, we are learning all about money. We've already learned about the types of money and saving money. Today, we are learning about spending money. If you like spending money, this book is perfect for you. Let's go. Why spend money? Why do people spend money? They use money to pay for their needs and wants. People buy things they must have to live, like food, clothes, and school supplies. These are called needs. They also spend money on fun things, like games, toys, and treats, and these are called wants. When to spend money? People spend money after they get paid. They also spend money once they reach a savings goal. What are you saving for right now? Let me know down below. Sometimes, people spend money when others need help. They donate money to charities. People spend money when their bills are due. They pay for heat, power, and phone services every month. What are some things that you and your family have to pay for every single month? It's important to spend money wisely. People should pay for their bills on time. Then they will not have to pay for late fees. People should try to pay for the entire bill. If they cannot, they have to pay an interest. Another useful tip, 
Buying things on sale helps people spend less money. People also spend less money when they use coupons. But be careful, credit cards can make spending money too easy. People can use credit cards too much, then they owe more money than they have. Remember, credit cards help you spend money right now that you don't have yet. So be careful when using credit cards. Budgeting. Having a budget helps people plan ahead. Budgets list how much people will spend on different things like food and rent. So what is your weekly budget? Share with me down below. People keep track of how much money they spend. Then they know exactly where their money goes. Having a budget helps people stay out of debt. It also helps people be smart with their money. I hope you are smart with your money too. Now let's go through some new words we learned in this book. Bills are written statements of money owed. Budget is a plan of how money will be spent. Charities are groups that raise money to help people in need. Coupons are printed pieces of paper that let people buy things at cheaper prices. These are called discounts. Credit cards are plastic cards people use to borrow money to buy things now and pay for them later. Debt is money that a person owes. Donate is to give something away. A goal is something that a person aims for or works towards. Interest is extra money that is owed for borrowing money. So remember, it's not free to borrow money. Late fees is money that is owed for paying a bill late. Needs are things that people must have to live, such as food, clothes, and a place to live. O is to need to pay someone. Rent is the cost of living in an apartment or house. Sale is a time when items are sold cheaper than usual. And finally, wants are things that people would like to have, such as games, toys and treats, but you don't need them to live. Now it's your turn. What did you learn about spending money today? And how can we spend money wisely? Share with me down below. Take some time to think about this and then I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For Animal World this week, we are learning about the squid, one of the most colorful animals in the ocean. Let's go. What are squids? Squids are some of the world's largest invertebrates. They have huge mantles and large eyes. These cephalopods force water through their bodies to move. They can swim in any direction. Squids are found in most oceans. They live at least 1,000 feet below the surface. That's 305 meters. There is very little light so far down, but squids adapt to this environment. They can see far in the dark. Squids come in many different sizes. The smallest are only about 0.6 inches long. That's only 1.6 centimeters. The largest are 43 feet long. That's about 13 meters long. These squids weigh nearly 1,000 pounds. That's 454 kilograms. The main part of a squid's body is called a mantle. Fins run along the top of it. A squid has large round eyes below its mantle. Pits beneath the eyes help it smell. Eight arms and two tentacles help a squid move and grab food. These are covered with strong suckers. Look at this, a hard pointed beak hides in the middle of a squid's long arms. Squids are carnivores that hunt for their food. Fish, crabs and shrimps are common prey. Squids catch prey with their tentacles and bring it back to their beaks. The beaks are strong enough to break through tough shells. Squid bodies are soft and easy for predators to eat. These cephalopods stay clear of hungry whales and tuna. Some squids change color like this to hide from danger. Others shoot out dark ink to confuse predators. Male squids interest females by changing colors quickly. Some males swim together in large circles while doing this. Females lay many eggs at once, 
the eggs bunch together in long jelly-like tubes. Baby squids hatch on the sea floor. They are on their own from the beginning. These babies know how to swim right away. Soon they will grow into strong sea predators. Now let's go through some of the words we learnt in this book. The first one is adapt, which is to become comfortable with something. Carnivores are animals that only eat meat. Cephalopods are animals that have excellent eyesight. Ink sacs and muscular arms with suckers. Cuttlefish, octopus and squids are types of cephalopods. Environment is the features of a natural area. Hatch is to break out of an egg. Invertebrates are animals without backbones. Mantles are folds of thick skin and muscles that make up the bodies of squids. Pits are cells underneath the eyes of squids that help them smell. Predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. And prey are animals that are hunted by those predators. Suckers are body parts that suck or cling. And tentacles are long bendable parts of a squid that are attached to a body and longer than arms. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the squid and what did you learn today? Share with me down below. And also, let me know what you think about them. Do you like them or do you think they're disgusting? After this, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. For social studies in December, we are learning all about plant power. Last week, we learned about poisonous plants. And today, we are learning about pollinating plants with this book by Mary Stu. Let's go. Chapter 1. Nectar and Pollen A hungry beetle lands on a flower. It wants the nectar inside. Nectar is liquid sugar. It gives creatures energy. The beetle takes something else too. What? Tiny grains of pollen. They stick to the insect's body. The beetle doesn't know it, but it will carry this pollen with it. It will pollinate the next tasty plant it lands on. Now, what is pollination? It is a process with steps. While a visitor eats from a flower, it rubs against the stamens. These are the male parts of the flower. Their tops are covered with sticky, powdery pollen. Did you know that flowers have bright colours and sweet scents? Why? To attract insects, birds, bats and other creatures, no nectar is inside. This is how the plant draws them in. The stamens surround the pistil. This is the flower's female part. The ovary is at the bottom. It will hold the plant's seeds. At the top is the stigma. It is very sticky. Pollen from the wind or a hungry visitor easily sticks to it. Once pollen is on the pistil, it changes. The pollen grows a tube. It goes all the way down the pistil. This is how the pollen's male cells travel to the ovary. Take a look. A plant has both male and female parts. Pollination brings cells from these parts together. Then the plant can make seeds in the ovary. Chapter 2. Growing Seeds The male cells enter the egg. The flower's petals drop off. The ovary becomes the fruit. It covers the growing seeds inside. The fruit grows bigger and tastier. It attracts creatures. Soon, animals will eat the fruit. The animals carry the seeds in their bodies. They leave the seeds with their waste. The tiny seed grow into new plants in new places. When pollinators find them, these plants grow seeds too. Did you know that some seeds don't need to be eaten to travel? Some stick to the animals or people. Some float in the water to new places and some are carried by the wind. Chapter 3. Pollinators Insects and birds are big pollinators, but some unusual animals pollinate plants too. The honey possum lives in Australia. This tiny possum eats nectar and pollen. It has a long snout and tongue to reach inside flowers. It passes pollen as it eats. Another creature pollinates at night. This mammal flies with wings. It's a bat. What kinds of plants does it eat and pollinate? Bananas, 
mangoes and many other fruit plants. Some flowers have many visitors, but other flowers have nectar that is hard to reach. Some hummingbirds have beaks made just for certain flowers. The sword-billed hummingbird has a very long beak. It feeds from long tube-shaped flowers like this one. These are busy. They are the best insect pollinators. They fly from flower to flower. They gather nectar and pollen as food. They carry pollen as they do so. Did you know that bees are very important? Why? They pollinate a lot of the food that we eat. How much? One out of every three bites. Now let's go through some of the new words we learned in today's book. The first word is cells, which is the smallest unit of a plant or other living thing. Energy is the ability to do work. Mammal is a warm-blooded animal with a spine and hair or fur. Females make milk for their babies. Humans, like us, are mammals too. Nectar is a sweet liquid in flowers that insects, birds and other creatures drink. Ovary is the part of a flowering plant where the seeds form and grow. Pistil is the female part of a flower. Pollen are the tiny grains on a male part of a flower that contain male cells to make seeds. Pollinate is to move pollen from one flower to another so that it can make fruits and seeds. Pollinators are agents such as insects and birds that pollinate these flowers and plants. Stamens are the male parts of a flower and stigma is the sticky tip of a pistol. Now it's your turn. What do you think about pollinating plants? Share with me down below. And also, let me know what are some things you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And then when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For reading and comprehension today, we are reading The Little Red Hen's Great Escape. Don't forget to stay to the end of the story because then we have some questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go! The little red hen was worried. Bulldozers had arrived in the farmyard. Holes were being dug. Something bad was going on. She went to see Farmer Green. She knew he wouldn't tell her what was happening, so she had to be clever. The builders are so busy, she clucked. Can I help? You, laughed the farmer. How can you help? I can pick up sand and straw to keep it tidy everywhere, the little hen said. Okay, said the farmer. Be careful while you can. The little red hen trembled with fear. What did he mean? Something terrible is happening, she told the pig, the lamb and the duck. Please help me find out what it is. Not until 11 o'clock, snorted the pig. No, thank you, laughed the lamb. You're just a chicken, quacked the duck. Lazy animals, thought the little red hen. Something terrible is happening, she told the chickens. Please help me find out what it is. What are you, the little head hen, clucked one. No, said the little red hen, but I think we're in danger. No one else will help me. The poor little red hen looked so worried. Okay, said the chickens. Excellent, clucked the little red hen. Keep your beaks to the ground, your eyes wide open, and report back. So the chickens scurried all over the farmyard, beaks to the ground, and eyes wide open. So did the chicks. Trying not to look suspicious, some chickens pecked at the ground, and some hopped around the farm. The little red hen tried to read the worker's plan. They all met back in the barn. There are piles of bricks, clucked one chick. Steel doors, said another. Big walls, said a third. They're planning to keep every animal cooped up inside, cried the little red hen. We must tell the others. You need some ointment, snorted the pig. You're utterly quackers, quacked the duck. You're mad, bleated the lamb. Well, all the chickens are leaving, said the little red hen, and they did. The next day, the farmer came to fetch all the animals. Come for a lovely walk, he told them. Isn't he nice, said the pig, the lamb and the duck. The little red hen was just being silly. In you go, smiled the farmer, opening the door. Help, cried the pig, the lamb and the duck. 
the chickens suddenly appeared and pushed the farmer aside. Clunk went the door, click went the key. Hooray! cried the pig, the lamb and the duck, making faces at the farmer. To celebrate their escape, the animals had a wonderful party. Everyone please help clean up, said the little red hen. All the animals did, because after all, they'd learned their lesson. Now it's time to do the comprehension questions. Question 1. Why was the little red hen worried? Was it A. She ran out of food? B. The bulldozers arrived in the farmyard? C. It was raining or D. A wolf wanted to eat her. What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B. The bulldozers arrived in the farmyard. Question 2. What other animals helped the little red hen find out what was happening? Was it A. The pig? B. The chickens? C. The duck? Or D. The lamb? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B. The chickens helped. Question 3. Who was the bad guy in the story? Was it A. The farmer? B. The little red hen? C. The sun? D. The chickens? What do you think about this one? I'll give you a moment. The answer is A. The farmer was the bad guy in the story. Question 4. What did the farmer want to build? Did he want to build a pond? A barn? A roller coaster or a house? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B. The farmer wanted to build a barn for the animals. Question 5. What did the farmer want to do with the animals? Was it A. Use them for a show? B. Invite them over for dinner? C. Keep them in a barn? Or D. Go with them to a party? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C. The farmer wanted to keep them in a barn. Final question, question 6. Where did the story take place? Was it at the desert, the zoo, a farm or a swamp? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C. The story took place at a farm. How many did you get correct? If you got all six correct, it means you got 100% and you're incredible. Now it's your turn. What did you think about the story and what are some things you learnt? Share with me down below. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next story for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.